All right, now that we are done with the setup, let's continue and let's use Lua inside of our C++ project. So first I will show you how you can run Lua scripts, then how you can load Lua scripts from the disk and run them, how you can bind and call C++ functions to Lua, and how you can bind and use C++ data structures. And in the end, I will show you how you can call Lua functions from C++ with and without return types. And as a first step, we will need to open up the libraries and we will need to load the base library. And if you take a look here, this is an enum and you can see that there are many more libraries you can load. So in case you need, for example, the math library, you can just um, add this one to the, to the function call as well and then you will have loaded up both the base and the math library. But in our case, we will be just needing the base libraries for this tutorial. And now I will show you how you can run Lua scripts. And this is pretty straightforward. You just call the dot script function on the Lua object. And here we can write Lua code. So let us print hello world from Lua. And on the console, it printed out hello world from Lua. Next, I will show you how you can load Lua scripts from the disk and how you can run them. And for this, I will add a file to the sandbox, to the source. I will add a new file and I will call it script.lua and I will print script.lua loaded. And now I will need to load this file, but because I am running the um, executable from this folder down here, so it is under the VS Studio debug folder and there's the sandbox and the script file is located in the source, I will have to set the Visual Studio working directory for this specific project to look for script files in the source folder. And to do this in CMake, this is pretty straightforward. There is a property you can set you set it on a target and we do this on the sandbox. The property is called VS Studio Debugger Working Directory and here we will need to provide it a path and in our case this will be the app source directory like so. And because we added the script file to the source folder, let us also put it inside the CMake list file as well. So it was called script.lua and if we now generate the project will now be listed here in our source folder as well. So, and in order to load Lua scripts from disk, we will call script file and we will give it the file name. And in our case, this is the script.lua file. And now we can just simply run it. And as you see here, the script.lua file has been loaded and this is exactly what we have written up here. And to achieve the same behavior in Visual Studio, I will show you how to do this. All right, so now we are in Visual Studio and I will add a new file here as well. So I will just say it's a new item and I will call it script.lua as well. And here I will say script.lua loaded. So I will load script.lua here and in the, um, in the project properties, if we go to the debugging section. And here we see the working directory, which is in our case already set properly to be the project directory. But in case you would have your Lua scripts in a different folder, let's say you could just um, edit this working directory here and it would load them up properly. But in our case, it was set up correctly from the beginning. And now we can just hit the um, the run button and as you can see it loaded the script. Okay now that we can load scripts we can now proceed with bind some some functions to Lua. But first now let's create a function and inside here let's as an example just print out something to the console and we will just say random stuff. Now to bind this we can say lua.set function and then it needs the key and the pointer to the function. So we will also call it random stuff and we will give it the function pointer to random stuff. If we for example load the script file after we bind the functions and things like that we can already access the bound functions 
inside of the script over here. So we can just call random stuff. And if you run it now, we'll call our function. And we can do the same for functions which have return types and which take arguments. So let us say we have something over here and we want to get random number. And as an input, we give it a value, just arbitrary. And here we will just return the value. And to bind this, we can also say like that. Yeah, and this is how you bind um, functions which have both um, arguments or parameters and a return type. And inside of the Lua script, we can just call it like that. So we assign our value to the returned value of the get random number and we give it a parameter and we just print it out. And the result of this will be that we print out the number 12, which we passed in here. And we can put inside there whatever we want and it will print the correct thing. And now we can continue on binding and using C++ data to Lua. Up here I will create a struct. I will call it my struct and I will give it some fields and a constructor and some methods as well. So it will have two floating point numbers. All right, now that we have our, our basic class over here, we can expose this to Lua. And to do this, we can call Lua dot new user type. We have to provide our, our class inside the Angular brackets, and then we will need to give it a name. So it will be my struct. And now we can um, expose the both the fields to Lua and also the constructors and the methods as well. Okay, let's start by exposing the constructors to Lua. And to do this, we call the Lua constructors functions like so. And inside of the Angular brackets, we can list now our constructors. So for the empty constructor, we will say it is void and it does not take any arguments. And for the second one, it is also return type of void and it will take in two floating point values. So we say float and float. Now we have exposed our two constructors to Lua. And now to expose the fields, we first have to declare the name of the field. In our case, this will be the X. And then we will need to provide a pointer to it. So it will be under my struct and the X. And we will do the same for the Y like so. And now inside the Lua code, we can create instances of my struct and we can access the X and Y values as well. So now let's create a my struct instance. We do it like this in Lua. So this one will be without the parameters and this one will be with the parameters like so let's call struct one and struct two and let us print the values this is for the first struct and this one will be for the second struct here you can see that the first constructor worked and the second one as well and if we want to we can now also change the values of the x like usual we will set this to 12 and y to 14 let's say and we will print the x and y again and as you can see here it changed and in order to expose the functions we also we will need to provide the function name and the pointer to the thing we want to expose so in our case this will be the print function this will be the get x function get y and set y now we can compile and after this has compiled successfully, we can use the methods in the Lua script. And here we will call the print function on the first struct. And it worked here, as you can see. We can then also set the x to be, let's say, 100. Print it again. Grab the x value from the struct, like so. Oops, we have to use the colon. And let's print the X like so. This is how we can expose C++ structs or classes to Lua and use them. Okay, let's now continue calling Lua functions from C++. And for this, let us first define a function inside the Lua script. And we will call it Lua function. And it will just print Lua function called to the console. And in order to access this, we have to first say that we want to have a std function 
it does not have a return type and it does not have any arguments and it will be a reference. We will call it Lua function and we will get it from the Lua object by accessing it like an array and we will say we want to get the Lua function we defined here and we can just call it like so. And if you run the program, it should do exactly that. It should print out Lua function call to the console, which it does. So, and now we can define a function which takes in an argument and returns a value. So let's say this one takes an, an X value. It prints the value and it returns it as well. And we will call this Lua function too. And we have to do basically the same thing except we will call this Lua function too, this one as well. Let's say it returns an integer and it takes in an integer and we want to capture the return value. So we will call this value and we will call the function and we will pass in one to three. And let's verify that we receive the return value. We want to print it as well. And there you have it. So we passed in a value 123 and we returned the same value. So this worked. And in order to um, expose C++ uh, structs to it, we can do the same thing basically. So let's first create uh, a new function. We will call it raw function three and let's say it uh, takes in a my struct and we want to modify the x value let's put it at one 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 y value at two 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 and now in order to um, use it we copy this from above lua function three and it takes in one of those things but this time it, it's not going to be copied but we want to pass in the struct as a reference and we call it like so and first we need to create a struct we pass it in here and let's call the print function on it as well and if you run now you can see that we changed uh, the values of a c++ object from a lua script yeah and that's pretty much it so yeah see you in the next one